Hello, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk Off the Podium. I have a rock star, wonderful musician, Leslie Mandoki, who is with me. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, how are you doing in this challenging times? I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm with my family. I conduct, I conduct orchestras and it's been tough because many of them are not operating. We're doing various other projects and trying to get that going. But uh, for the most part, everything is lot on the lockdown. Um, and um, um, I get to spend lots of time with my son, which has been great. Uh, that's been one positive. He's he just turned one, so it's been it's been great seeing him. I, I was going to ask you, what have you been doing during this time during the pandemic? Uh, you're in Germany, from what I understand. What, what's what's happening there? So I'm a Hungarian guy who is living in Germany, and uh, uh, I I have a wife who is a frontline worker, a first responder. She's oh. a doctor. So um, so my story is a bit differing uh, from from yours or or um, everybody else, because it was the beginning of January um, as I uh, received the first calls from China, mm -hmm. uh, from Chinese, uh, actually anti-communist uh, friends, musicians, uh, who uh, and they were just trying to point uh, out that, that this is something very, very, very challenging uh, coming. And so in middle of February, I already, my wife was uh, kind of in the, uh, uh, in action uh, as a first responder and for my worker as a doctor. So we called our kids home um, and I'm living uh, fortunately by the uh, Lake Stromberg on a waterfront. So, so we just were gathering. So um, very similar to your uh, situation, uh, all of a sudden the family was together, which is very positive. Um, and, uh, and so it it's gives me room to think uh, of our society, to rethink and uh, I mean, uh, what can we do as an artist right now? But mm -hmm. we can't go out, and we have to cancel and, and reschedule, and reschedule and postpone and reschedule. And uh, so my studio complex is around uh, a mile away from my house. So I was uh, uh, sending my employees home. So, and then I was on my own and, and all of a sudden, uh, my wonderful analog world from the Bösendorfer and Hammond organ, and, and, uh, and you, know, you, you see the big solid state desk in the mm -hmm. back. Uh, um, so, uh, and uh, so all of a sudden, uh, I had to deal with the digital age uh, without my engineers. Yeah. And uh, so I was going around France, like Ian Anderson, Jeff Attal, like John Harrell, Supertramp, Berto the guys in Los Angeles, and uh, Bobby Kimball, and uh, uh, Samuel Phillips and and my dear friend Randy Bracker and uh, the guys from the Mavericks and band Chris Thompson and so on and, and uh, Steve Bailey in Boston and and I was just talking to the guys. I said, "How are you doing over there in America?" And everybody said, "No, no, no, we we are not not even there yet." Yeah. So so you guys were a little in delay, and um, so um, I, we were in the shutdown and and. Uh, and uh, I, I, I thought, okay, two things I cannot be guaranteeing in life. Yeah. Creativity and responsibility of an artist. Yeah. So I started to write this song, We Say Thank You. Uh -huh. uh, to, to say thank you to the frontline workers, for first, response, uh, first responders, you know, and also workers, you know, that uh, uh, the, the action, you know, didn't have masks yet. I mean, I mean, uh, we're talking about March, you know, that we didn't know nothing about the COVID-19. We just thought it's a kind of little flu and we get over it and, and, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw the horrible uh, pictures uh, on TV from Italy and uh, we saw um, the horrible news then later on from New York City. And then, you know, so uh, all of a sudden we all realized that this is something very really serious about we are dealing here with. And um, that's why I thought it's just time to say thank you uh, to everyone who keeps the world turning, even if the world turns much slower. Because you and me, we are privileged boys. I mean, we stay home, enjoy family, mm -hmm. but uh, millions of people are out there and, uh, and uh, they've taken away our crash, yeah. crash and, and, uh, and electricity comes you know, from the plug and the internet is on and, uh, and the radios are uh, airing the stuff and, and so on. So um, and I realized how privileged I am and how much I, it, it's needed to say thank you to the people who are really trying to, to, to keep the world turning. Yeah. And, uh, and, and also to reset our value system, 
to rethink that uh, are we are really uh, want to live in a greedy world where egomaniacs are uh, you know showing uh, the way uh, we are not getting to, uh, we are not going to get through this dark tunnel of challenging times uh, with, with this uh, idea of uh, of a greedy egomaniac uh, uh, world where we are living in echo chambers and uh, um, news bubbles uh, and 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 algorithms uh, are just leading us what are we going to listen to and uh, so uh, let's get back to a more human society and let's uh, try to find what is uh, uh, what is common what is what's uniting us and, and not this what is dividing us and I just just realized that uh, uh, whatever we read and see on TV uh, this is about the division uh, what is taking and, and especially now we are just um, the elections are coming up at you guys and uh, so uh, I thought that we musicians we have to be there now uh, against the division you know but then let's talk about what is uniting us mm-hmm. what is what is the mutual value but and let's uh, reset our value system a little uh, uh, let's talk about humanity family and the friends maybe I'm not and who are you mark on a Facebook as a friend but as a friend who is taking a beer with you when you're really doing not not really well. You just yeah. lost the job. You lost uh, your girlfriend, and, and then they say, "Hey, have a beer together and have a little chat." This is a friend. Yeah. And uh, um, you know, so and not that you're sharing the funny holiday pictures with. So, um, so that's why I'm, it's, it's time to reset uh, as a society our values and fine tune it again. Yeah. Uh, and um, we, one thing we can sh- and we should uh, learn from the Chinese uh, because uh, the Confucian. Um, Philosophy is saying that uh, they have one word for crisis and chances. Mm. It's the same word. Wow. And let's take this crisis for the chance for a better world. And and we musicians, we, we are not painters who are alone in their you know, painting and and the writers or poets. So let's yeah, let's go out. I mean, you are a conductor, so you know that we are kind of uh, uh, our art. I cannot be, you know, created alone by us. You know, this is just uh, this our art is something uh, what we need. Every, everybody, your art, my art is just uh, you need a group of people. Uh, yeah. You make a great uh, performance as a conductor. If you have great musicians, uh, yeah. then you have a chance to do. Yes. And uh, same goes to me as a band leader. You know, so who am I? And so. So, so these are the things I was just uh, kind of reflecting during this uh, shutdown, and, mm. and I was hoping that humanity comes back, and humanity wins against greediness. And, uh, and so that's 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 what is Brahman up to. And uh, and if you ask me what I was doing during the toughest time of the pandemic, I, um, times time when I was rethinking the life, just to you know reset it. This is really very important. Yeah. And you've had uh, a tough background coming from Hungary at the time and, and making such a great career. It's, it's such an inspirational story. So much could be learned for, for youth to never give up and to keep going. Uh, a little bit about your background and what it was like to grow up in Hungary and, and do the things that you did to come out of that and be the great musician that you are. Well, look, Let's go back to the that the communists were destroying everything in life, part of this uh, education system. Mm-hmm. It was the only social system that was working was education. Mm-hmm. And my dad was telling me, you know, when I was seven and eight, I said, "Yo, boy, the only way to win against the communist, you know, the only chance for a victory uh, against dictatorship is education." So I expect to, from you, my son, he said, to be good. Mm. So do your best. So it was a strong written for me that, that I, I'm, I'm kind of a tough working pupil yeah. uh, in my youngest years. And then um, tragically, my father died as I was 16. And uh, I was in a period of time then to make uh, a decision. Am I going to be a painter, a poet, or a musician? And uh, on the deathbed of my father, he said, boy, promise me that my grandchildren are never going to read censored papers. And I said, dad, 
I mean, there is the Iron Curtain. He said, it's nothing for you. Go and live your dreams and don't dream your life. So that's what I did. I left and uh, I was starting to dream. Uh, and I sort of had to get the energy to, to, and it was music who gave me the courage to say to myself, I'm creating my destiny. I'm mm. not expecting. And, um, and it was not easy. I was not a, not a kind of, uh, I was an illegal refugee. I wasn't speaking English. I wasn't speaking German uh, because uh, the communists had the idea, something that maybe you have never heard about, uh, of uh, that they were building a second Iron Curtain that was the language barrier. Mm. Uh, that we learned Russian, I'm mean, I'm Hungarian mother tongue, mm. and you know, the mutual language in the second world, as in the first world was in English, mm. the second world from North Korea to Cuba was Russian. So, um, and uh, I mean, by the way, the beautiful, I was hating it because it was, you know, the Soviet Union. So, I, so it was, it was a big, but, but uh, culturally seen as great to, being able to read Dostoevsky uh, yeah. in order to so, so here for it. And, uh, and you listen to Stravinsky with the different ears. That, yeah. that stuff. So, and you see the Eisenstein movies different. So, so we should not forget that the, the Russian nation is a great culture of nation. So, uh-huh. um, because they made so many terrible things as a Soviet Union that we just tend to fo- don't forgive them for good reasons. Uh, but but don't forget the culture of these people. My God, yeah. this is great. So um, I came and I was touching down in a refugee camp with my uh, dear friend Gabo Chipo, who's a cartoonist. And uh, and then the officer uh, was an American officer. I was saying, boys, what are you going to do here now in the free uh, West, the free world? The Gabo said nothing at all here because I would like to go to Hollywood because I'm a Hungarian cartoonist. I'm 22 and I would like to. Uh, you know, just found the studio, what the Hungarians should do in Hollywood. So his first work, you know well, was Simpsons. Yeah. And his second work was Rugrats. And that was Duckman and, and uh, so on. Uh, so he made it up to 720 employees in his studios. So, and, um, and I said, okay, well, uh, I'll stay a little while in Germany. And uh, because... Uh, and Munich was a big scenery back then of music, like Freddie Mercury of Cream was living here and uh, Deep Purple was recording here. Um, the Rolling Stones were recording here. Elton John was here for three um, different albums and uh, Donna Summer was living here. And uh, so it was just some of the American number one songs came out of Munich, like Silver Convention, Penny McLean. And, and, so, and so it was a famous Munich song. So I thought, okay, as a, as a studio cat, I, I can, you know, make a breath here, just to start it. That's what happened. Mm. Wow. Perfect. I, wow. I really liked it. And, uh, and it was a, a, a good time. And uh, all of a sudden, by a combination of accidents, uh, I became a pop star. And uh, so a couple of mini records, and I was in a, on the title page of magazines. And, uh, and uh, seriously, I, this was not my plan. I just wanted to make great music. That's all. Yeah. So I, it, it was. It turns out that you know, horrible. You know, I, um, because uh, you became the boy of the year in the youth magazine. It's everything what you don't want to uh, be in your life. You know, if you want to be a serious musician, you know, who was working in your, you know, uh, in in the, as I was fifteen and everybody was going out and playing soccer and and uh, trying to chase the girls and what I'm doing, I'm practicing. You know, so. Uh, consequently, also when I was 23, I didn't want to be a pop star. I just wanted to be a, 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 a you know, a respected musician. Um, and who I was as I was 22 before I became a pop star. So it was a difficult thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was fun. Uh, and today, if I'm looking back uh, to that period of time, then I said, okay, I could have enjoyed it. So, <laughs> but, uh, but it was, it was fun. So, um, and and then, then I realized that. Uh, the only way to to keep myself happy mm-hmm. and to really do what my father told me and was that bad so to hold on to the dreams and and uh, live my dreams and don't live my uh, uh, and so so life is not about you you dream your life it's about you you live your dreams and uh, and so so I was 
working hard, went to America and uh, back to England and, 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 you know, all the great friends, uh, like Ian Anderson of Jabotal and Chaka Khan and Lionel Richie and, and so on. So I started to work with these gangs, you know, and, uh, and as a producer, as a writer, as a drummer, as a musician and, and you know, and, and uh, all of a sudden one golden record came to the other. Uh, and I was like a, a musician always on the road and, 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 and producing in Los Angeles and in New York and London, and of course in Munich. But then, uh, you know, the kids and uh, you're just mentioning that yours, uh, one of yours is one year old. So some of the kids were just, you know, tiny little kids. And, and I said, okay, I have to settle down. And sometimes it's the most difficult task for a musician to settle. Yeah. Uh, and I, so, so then I, I you, you, you must know this because also a conductor is like a gypsy guy who is, is around the world and the, you know, I get traveling craziness. Mm. And, um, and I was building the studio about uh, 25 years ago, 26 or so. That. And, uh, you know, back then it was a big uni- uh, uh, major record company. And they told me, I said, that Leslie's must be totally crazy. Uh, and um, and um, because this is by Lake Stromberg, it's not, not in, the, in downtown of Munich. And so, and uh, Lionel Richie was coming here, then, then Chaka Khan came, then Phil Collins came. And, uh, so and and we continued our, our our Manduki band and and what was the Manduki band about? Um, uh, what we were just founding 29 years ago. So in the refugee camp, as uh, Gabo Chipo said to the American officer mm-hmm. that I would like to go to Hollywood and um, start with a cartoon uh, movie studio, and uh, and then he started with Simpsons and followed up with Progress. I said I would like to play with Ian Anderson of Jetta and with Jack Bruce of Cream and Aldi Nola. And it was uh, August uh, 1975. Yeah. And um, everybody was listening now, you know, back then, you know, they all played in stadiums. So uh, so the American officer looked at me and said, boy, you really know what you're talking about? <laughs> um, and I said, yeah, this is the vision because I think, I mean, this made me to be a musician. I mean, the influence of them. So, um, it, it was it was hitting me to do so, and uh, so it took a little while, you know, and and Carlos Productions, some gold records uh, <laughs> on the roll, and 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 gave me the liberty to to do what I really wanted to do. So uh, I founded the, the band twenty nine years ago, exactly with Ian Anderson, <laughs> of Chad Dal and Jack Bruce of Cream and Aldi Mola, and joined by David Clint Thomas of Black Sabbath Tears and Bob King of Toto and. And the Bracken Brothers and uh, so um, Andrew Jackson. So we just started to, to really play, uh, kind of match your jazz rock, kind of intellectual prog rock with jazz flavors. Actually, pop music, but 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 with a little intellectual approach. And uh, and um, I'm very happy that uh, the, the current album, which is after 29 years, uh, is not our first one, of course. We have a lot of a great and uh, pretty successful albums here in Europe. Now, now we are getting out in America. It's living in the gap in Hungary, which is a double album. So, so look, I mean, this is everything. What, but uh, a record company would say there's a no-go. You know, the double album. You know, I'm mean, even. Uh, if, I, mean, I just have to uh, show you that. You see, um, this is even a kind of vinyl, um, and and uh, it's a double vinyl with a double CD, and, and so. Uh, what is all about this music? Is it just intellectual at all? Uh, it's political, so it follows the path of Woodstock uh, with the new rebels. I mean, a bunch of old rebels like me, together with young rebels, uh, singing about this gap we are living in, mm-hmm. about the division and how we can uh, unite us again, and, and how how we how we can build bridges. And uh, and uh, so this is this is so important, and uh, and that's why we try to turn the wind. Mm-hmm. These are the titles of, uh, and uh, try to get out of our comfort zone and and uh, and just uh, sing about the values what made us to be who we are. Yeah. And uh, we all know that in America we need to talk about this. Yeah. Uh, who we are. Yeah. And where are we at? Uh, where are we going to go? And uh, we know the Europeans and uh, and rest of the world from the non Americans, we know that we have to look up to America. Yeah. Uh, and, and we, because it's the greatest nation 
Um, and by the way, a nation uh, built on millions of refugees. Yeah. Um, you know, is, America is a melting pot. Yeah. And, uh, and so I was a refugee too. So I know what I'm talking about. And America culturally is so important to the world. And everybody would talk about economical issues. I would talk about culture issues. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the culture issues. So I was growing up under the influence of Miles Davis, uh, Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, and and Bill Bartok. Yeah. So um, so these are so consequently uh, today I'm absolutely happy that I you are a conductor so you know what I'm talking about that I can show you. Uh, that there's a double album, uh, is, and, and the one uh, side of the album is Hungarian Pictures of by Bill Abatu. Wow. So, and uh, you know, you, you're sitting here in the studio where you are right now. So, so I'll show you one more time here, you see, uh, um, with Corey Handel, a fabulous organ player, uh, uh, 32 years old, it's just a genius uh, from Brooklyn, um, New York. And uh, listening to original Bela Bartok vinyls, you know, that were always playing. And um, and you sitting here with Aldi Maola and Randy Bracker and Bill Evans, you know, uh, and uh, uh, Richard Bourne. This is it's part of one, what a wonderful life. Yeah. Really. And we're trying to transfer it for the young people. And I'm, I'm so happy that when I'm reading daily this incredible reviews from the United States, and I say, wow, Manduki, you are such a lucky boy. <laughs> Uh, that that uh, you know that we, you're reaching uh, America with, with this message to to bridge over uh, the gaps and, and to get out of the comfort zone and let's find your uh, uh, value system uh, and you know music is the greatest unifier. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter is this jazz, is this rock, is this classic, what you know, uh, but it's unifying because this is unlikely to books and, and to paintings. It's a kind of group effort, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, uh, a conductor like you and a band leader, producer like me, we have the knowledge what the psychologists are standing to check for. Mm -hmm. You know, because we know how group dynamics are working. Yeah. And we have to know the result before it's happening, not after. Yeah. Okay? Because um, then your concept is uh, destroyed in my concert is destroyed if you yeah. don't not know before that your first vinyl is not going to work. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, we are kind of far ahead of a psychologist. Yeah. Because we, we get either we prove that we were right, uh, <laughs> uploads at the end of the night on, the, on stage is okay. Or, or uh, so, so, so you can say, I'm sorry, it was a bit complex. Uh, and, you know, and this is so lovely in our job. Mm -hmm. This is our true profession. Never before I felt so much thankfulness and, and then I, I have the cho chance to serve, serve the audience. And that's, that, that's my translation of the COVID-19 drama, mm -hmm. you know, to serve, serve the people and, and to, uh, to, to try to give them um, something meaningful, something good, but they can build on. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned Bell and Bartok, of course, for those who don't know, one of the great composers of the 20th century in the world in general. He's uh, done so much for contributing to uh, classical music and to the, to other genres as well. To, uh, he's not only a composer, some people just think of him as a composer, but he's also a great ethnomusicologist. He, really knew so much about folk music and incorporated so much folk music in what he did. Uh, so such and a great uh, fighter against anti-Semitism. Yes. As well. Yes. So, uh, you know, um, a little bit about a couple of things you mentioned, America, and also a little bit about my background as well. Actually, my uh, birth certificate says Yerevan, Armenia, Soviet Union. Uh, I was born in <laughs> I was born in Armenia, which was part of the Soviet Union. My parents came to the U.S. So that's another immigrant story there. So uh, any Hungarian musicians, you've worked with so many musicians, any Hungarian musicians that you're like, I really want to work with that person. I've never worked with him or her uh, and I want to work with them. Are there any that come to mind that you want to share? Uh, I mean, uh, first of all, 
uh, it's, it's great uh, that you mentioned in your background, you know, where, where you're coming from. Because uh, your life is uh, proving me right that Amirog is a great magic boy. Yeah. Um, no? And uh, just, just circling back to the Bilabato, because you're familiar with this genius. Uh, it was about 15 years ago as uh, I was producing a, a TV show which just blended up and later on a Guinness Book of um, Records um, because 40 million people saw that TV show. Wow. It called uh, Southern Night, it was in Germany, and um, it was called The 50 Years of Rock. And the Manduki Somi's band was you know, kind of the, the host of that show. And uh, the lineup was Jack Bruce on bass. Mm -hmm. um, John Lord on Hammond, Manfred Mann on synthesizer. I played the drums. Pete Frampton was on guitar. Mm -hmm. um, Ian Anderson was on flute and singing. Um, and uh, Bobby Kimball, uh, Chris Thompson were, uh, were the, the vocalists. Uh, and many, many other great uh, musicians like uh, Greg Lake of Lemons Lake and Palmer was joining us in Mexico. So, and that's rehearsal to the show. Uh, late Greg Lake of Amazon Lake and Palmer and late John Lord of Deep Purple came after me. I said, let, let's, let's have a dinner, just three of us, no party, just, just you know, let's talk. But we would like to talk about something very serious about Bill Abato. And uh, I said, uh, so what is your connection or your relation to Bill Abato? And I said, well, I, I was uh, learning to walk uh, with the microcosmos. Um, and you put a smile on your face, so, so you know what I'm doing, right? And uh, this is part of for children and um, part of it. And uh, so we just started talking. And then, then Greg Lake is starting, saying, so, uh, you know, pictures of an exhibition of Amazon League of Palmas, of course, I'm one of his rock classics. So yeah, so you know what? We wanted to record uh, Hungarian pictures, but we couldn't get the rights. So uh, it's another five years, and then you know that 70 years is going to be over, and then we can um, do this. And uh, very unfortunately, they both could, I mean, they, they were both died before we could do it, but um, I promised them. And um, so we were sitting down and, and uh, here in the studio, and and uh, actually we said, okay, why was Bela Bartok looking around in, a, in this uh, uh, wonderful uh, Transylvania and, and you know, the, the large Hungarian, you know, um, Transylvanian area and, and it was trying to, to research work, I mean, why certain melodies were surviving in certain areas with certain kind of populations. And, and it was crazy because like in Transylvanian uh, um, mountains, he find gypsy bands who were playing in Jewish villages, which is uh, 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 very rare uh, in that way. And, and uh, German villages and uh, how, and, uh, and Hungarian villages and, and learned all of them and combined it all and, uh, and, and united. Yeah. And his message was against, against the Nazis, against the National Socialism, against upcoming uh, Hitler. You know, he saw the danger. And he thought music can cure this. Music is a great unifier. And I picked up on that. You know, music is the greatest unifier. Yeah. And so it was so wonderful to work on this and make pop music out of that, you know, because he was, you know, searching, you know, um, for, for popular music. I mean, folk songs are pop music. Mm -hmm. and you just have to give them the right groove. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> and uh, so, so it's just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased and I'm very privileged that you are interested in these uh, things because... Uh, and then I, want, I mean, hey, we just charted number one. So, and also in Germany, Amazon uh, we charted number one. So, so, um, so uh, let's keep the finger crossed for America.
Yeah. So uh, any musicians, you know, I, I said Hungary, but you could pick anywhere in the world. Any musicians that you still would want to work with and collaborate with, you haven't done so. Any that um, come to mind? I mean, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a very, very fortunate guy. So I'm an absolutely fortunate guy. Um, and uh, maybe I would mention Sting. Okay. Because uh, I once briefly I met at the bar after a, a concert of his. And, uh, you know, uh, the people around us, are the, I mean, he, he's not a guy who hang out in bar. He just came in and left. But but um, um, they were kind of gathering and after show. And, uh, and he said it was... Um, and we got introduced. But I never had something special that I would have offered to him. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so I never got in touch with him. But, um, but he is a genius. And uh, yeah. this was one of these. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I have the fortune uh, and the privilege to, to play with the blessing great uh, musicians. So I just really, really... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excellent, you know, great guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, a standard question for me on this show has been a life-changing moment. And there, you've said some things that I know for sure were life-changing for you growing up and coming, to, you know, moving to Germany, you know, you know, being a refugee and all this. But any other moments that really changed your life musically or personally, maybe, maybe a personal life-changing moment, any that come to mind that you haven't shared so far? I think... Um... Meeting people are always a kind of life-changing things, you know. Uh, in my my life was Ian Anderson. Yeah, he he's a he's a incredible, intelligent, incredibly educated, uh, fantastic musician, mm -hmm. and a great, deep feeling, absolutely uh, outstanding person. I mean, just it's, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, he's just really really someone very special. Yeah. And Ian Anderson, uh, obviously the whole world knows, but uh, those who don't know, uh, he's not only a great frontman and a leader of the Jethro Tull, but uh, he really put an instrument that not many people really knew in rock to the forefront. And so many people know it now is the flute. No one really thought the flute could be rocked out like that. And he really, <laughs> he, he really did it. I remember seeing him in 2005 or six around then in Seattle, Washington. He, he was on a tour. And I saw him then. It's amazing. And he he had so much energy and he was playing. And uh, yet he, after one of the songs, he turned around and said, hey, um, I, and this is not even my full energy. I had way more 20 years ago. But I was like, wow, how did you have way more 20 years ago? You're rocking out. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. So that, that I, was, I had uh, another, that, I mean, about the half a year, I had a session with 25 years old musicians here. And, and, uh, and this turned out the other way around. As uh, uh, I was just here working in my life, you know, I was recording and playing, and, and they said, the 25 years, I said, Leslie, I mean, you can't expect that I would have far, half as much energy than you have. <laughs> I said, boy, oh boy, uh, you would have seen me when I was 20 much. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, just, just yesterday I had an interview with the Hungarian women's magazine, mm -hmm. and uh, because of the number one chart entry, and uh, and they ask, I mean, am I getting up early or getting laid better? I said, look, guys, to be a musician is very simply as an early bird and late night. <laughs> and it's eight days a week. <laughs> it's 24 7, of course. And you know yourself. I mean, yeah. Uh, this is a, to be a musician is a commitment for life. Yeah. What's uh, your greatest fear? A loose health. Because. Hmm. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I think uh, this is one of the uncontrollable part of life. Mm. You know, cancer or something like, you know, you can't control and, and the hits, you know, well, COVID, you know, you know, try to be safe and try to keep yourself safe and all of a sudden it hits you. Yeah, well, this is, but anything else, I mean, of course, I mean, I care for my kids and, and you know, that I hope that, you know, they always, come home safe uh, but um, so but um but i don't want to lose anyone so yeah. so so that like you don't know, and the one who's listening uh so it's just this is only fear because uh, the rest is creating your destiny yeah get yeah. up in the morning and doing it yeah 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 and probably 49 percent of the things you do go wrong what's up i mean hey 
I mean, you make a living out of this one person. <laughs> um, a composer, maybe Bella Bartok, uh, I'm assuming he might be on this list, but a, a composer, uh, a pop star, a rock star, anyone from the past that's no longer alive that you wish you had the moment to sit down across them and ask them some questions, who would that be? Miles Davis, I would say. Wow. Okay. Miles Davis. Because uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate to, to, uh, to have a great friendship with uh, Quincy Jones. And, 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 and very often I've been called by Hungarian or German Quincy Jones by Aldi Maula or Steve Lukather. Um, or, or Jack Bruce called me the Hungarian or uh, Duke Ellington. Uh, <laughs> so, so, this, uh, so to say. Um, this is... Uh, but... Um, yeah, well, Miles Davis would be great, or Jimi Hendrix. Uh, and I would ask Jimi Hendrix what kind of classical music was he listening to. Uh, you know, because, uh, um, you know, it's one of my stunning moments of life. As I was playing first time in New York City 32 years ago with Anthony Jackson, uh -huh. one of the most recorded bass player ever. You know, like, and, uh, and he started to talk about Bill about of string quartet arrangements, you know, uh, to me. And, and then we went to Harlem uh, to his apartment and, and he had the greatest uh, Bill about of string quartet uh, collection I ever saw in my life. You know, so just that. So these are the moments of life that are just beautiful. Of course, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, just for our listeners, I mean, this is a really great story. Uh, I mean, Robbie Williams is not big in America, but he's very really big in, in Europe. I mean, from Take That, and, and as he got out of Take That, I mean, uh, RCA back then, you know, big record coming with the boss was calling me and said, as in, don't you want to, you know, consider it that uh, in your iconic band, Mandurgi Soviets, you take a young youngster in there. And he was sending a cassette, so it was so, the uh, story's old, you have cassettes, and so it was here. And, and Jack Bruce and Adam Owl and Bobby Kimball and all the rest of the gang was here. So. And then the next day, you know, the, the, my secretary was bringing down to the studio the, the envelope, and and, uh, and I said, Jack was, yeah, this is, uh, you know, this ex take that guy, um, a boy group. I said, well, wait a minute, my kids are listening to that too. And I said, no, it's not, it's okay, it's, uh, let's have a listen. So, no, this guy is dancing. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, we are icon, we are like, so. So he was just breaking the cassette and uh, putting it in a trash can. And, uh, and then, then later on, we went out for dinner here by the lake. And, and, and he said, we are a, a boy group anyway, because it's, he is Ian Anderson, and he is Bobby Kimball, and David Clayton Thomas, and Aldi Mill, and you know, as myself. And so, so we are a boy group, and we need a girl. So we were just making fun, you know, like, like boys are drinking beer and, and just setting another session. And, uh, and I said, okay, you know what? We all take a beer mat, uh, you know, like in Germany, you have the beer mat uh, under your beer. And so, and everybody's taking a Sharpie and writing it down uh, who would be the best girl in the boy group. Of when do we saw me as a boy group, then we need to go. So everybody was down, one name, check account. And so I was counting three, four, and we had to turn it. So we came back to the studio. I was sitting here where I'm sitting right now, and I called Shaka, so uh, in Los Angeles, and uh, and I said, uh, "Darling, uh, you know what happened? I mean, we just you know take that. She didn't know who take that is, and Robert did that. But you know, we are a boy group here. But you know, Ian Anderson, Jack Bruce, and all the rest of the gang. What about uh, you? I mean, you should be our girl." And Shaka kind of said, "Yeah, of course." And so she was flying, and then she was singing with us. Wow. So these are the beautiful moments of life. Wow. And Shaka great. is the greatest. So we love her. I mean, she's, she's such incredible uh, talent. Yeah. A couple of more questions for you. I know we're coming down to the end, but I know your, your life is so full of music. You're always busy with music. Any other passions, anything else you do that's not musical, whether it's some kind of a hobby, uh, you know, working out, whatever you're doing outside of music? Oh, well, um, you know, you, you know, uh, you are a conductor, so you know that music is, is uh, taking a huge part of your life. And the rest belongs to my kids. Yeah. And uh, so, of course, with the kids, you know, I have a canoe. Uh, we are living in waterfront, so I'm Canadian, so Canadian. 
and and, and I'm cooking, uh, so I love to cook. Very typical for musicians, you hang out in super restaurant on tour and, and you learn from the chiefs. So, so, so this is, um, uh, of course, uh, painting and literature always gonna stay with my, you know, with me uh, to create your covers and you know, writing your lyrics. So this is of course, mm -hmm. but, uh, and, and you, you grow into technology, of course, because mm -hmm. I'm the studio and all but uh, I think uh, my life doesn't really uh, offer spaces for, for intense hobbies. Uh, so I have, have a decent family life and uh, that, that occupies the rest of my time when I'm, I'm not, not playing music. Yeah. Uh, one more question. This is uh, another question that I've been asking all my guests over 100 episodes is uh, something very important because I think they're the future young musicians what advice would you give to young musicians having such a great career yourself uh well i'm doing this day by day for my three kids so uh, so i'm very experienced uh, to answer this question uh number one you have to uh, understand that my generation destroyed everything yeah. so uh so that the logical way that you are trying to create great music, you put it on a vinyl or a CD or a cassette or whatever, and and uh, you go out and, and, and you're promoting it with a tour and you're playing and you know you, your fan base is growing and and you get get a decent income from from the CD. Uh, this is done forever. This is my generation has destroyed it forever. So uh, uh, and take the blame. I take the blame that we let it. You know because we were. Uh, living in a sunny side of life and, and and we were not realizing that that is uh streaming is going to destroy any chance uh for new talents to to grow why i'm saying this because um streaming is based on the idea that you have tracks mm -hmm. uh rock music or sophisticated music is play based on the on the idea that you have an auto album mm -hmm. and you have like me you come after a couple of decades a bunch of golden records in the world mm -hmm. and you have a sort of basics what you can build on the new stuff what you're doing so my advice to the kids to understand that this formula is destroyed you have to rebuild uh, the music industry in a way that that you find your position. And if you are creating sophisticated music, album-oriented music, you have a challenging life. And uh, but it's the greatest profession on earth. So, if you are ready to face difficulties and challenges. And, and you're ready to serve your audience and you're ready to forget any ego trips just to, you know, to be a part of a community that you will have a lovely life. But it's not the easiest. So it's going to be rough and, and tough. Yeah. And uh, you get later to bed and you get earlier up as many others and you don't have your weekends. Um, but if you're ready to do this, then you have the most beautiful life on earth. Wow. That was well said. Anything else you want to add before we end? Well, I wish to all of us who are not so fortunate to be call themselves themselves Americans that this leading role in America, like for you. So you're coming from Armenia and. Uh, you find your native land in America, a kind of new native homeland. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the torch was uh, leading you there, mm -hmm. probably your parents. Yeah. And uh, so uh, what I'm asking to all of us who are listening today, uh, take music as the greatest unifier. Let's get out of our comfort zone and let's talk about what is uniting us. Mm -hmm. And not about what is dividing us. There's a lot of things out there yeah. that is dividing us. 
well, let's talk about what is uniting us. Yeah. And let's find, you know, our value system. Let's be human again. Yeah. Let's forget greediness. I'm just, let's, let's forget our egos. And God bless America. Uh, and uh, God bless the world. America is the greatest country and, uh, and, uh, and it's a home for people like you, uh, uh, who is for many Americans coming from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. They're never gonna visit. Yeah. And um, let's enjoy the melting pot, this incredible roots of culture, which is going to be always the guiding light in the world and together united we are going to get through this dark tunnel of COVID-19. And together we will light up the uh, fire at the end of the tunnel and it's gonna be a bright night. And it's gonna be a better world as we got into there. Thank you for having me and God bless. Hey, thank you so much. As uh, uh, you know, a legendary musician, Leslie Mandoki was with me. And as Ian Anderson, your friend and uh, musical collaborator said, I think he said it well in one of his interviews, he said, it's very rare to find someone who's an amazing uh, world-class producer, but also a world-class musician. That's you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me and uh, uh, stay healthy. Take care of your kids. And uh, I wish you all the best. And one day we see each other in person. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Let's Talk Off the Podium. If you enjoyed this episode, please comment, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next episode.